Flow state. What is it to yeah. you? So, um, you know, flow state has become, you know, quite a popular idea. I think the original concept um, really comes from Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, mm -hmm. um, who was... Uh, so was just a brilliant, brilliant guy. He recently passed away, sadly, mm. um, and had a dry sense of humor. Hilarious, hilarious guy. But um, so he defined flow as an effortless state of high productivity where time seems to pass and where you don't feel captured by either the external stimulus world or by your own actions. Mm -hmm. So what I see it is in the sweet spot between being dominated by perceptions and being dominated by your own plans for action. Mm -hmm. It's when you have that perfect balancing middle point where everything is in harmony and you're just doing it. You're just in the moment, you're just there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's devilishly hard to get into that state. Um, but again, I think that there are probably techniques through practice and exercise that could help us to recognize when we're being captured by the stimulus world or being captured by our own obsessive thoughts mm. um, and to just let it happen and to be in the moment mm. and um, to pay attention. Yeah. In fact, one of my favorite books is uh, by Aldous Huxley, mm. who most people know because he wrote the book Brave New World, right. which was a dystopian mm -hmm. novel. There's another utopian sort of novel. It's called Island by Aldous Huxley. And um, anyhow, on this island, everyone is well adjusted. Everyone is trained from very early in life to be psychologically sophisticated and to be in touch with their feelings, to share them openly. They have a whole bunch of other good things. Um, but um, one of the things that they did on the island was to train minor birds who, you know, capable of some speech imitation, mm -hmm. at least. Some people think it's even cleverer than that. But anyhow, the birds would fly around the island. They were trained to say a few different phrases, one of which was, attention, attention. Mm -hmm. So you just be wandering around through the forest and all of a sudden bird says attention and you know, it leads you to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And then they have one other phrase, here and now boys, here and now. And while maybe sexist by saying boys, here and now <laughs> is I think a message that we could all benefit from if we wanna be in these flow states, to really be in the here and now um, in the moment and to recognize when we're being captured um, by either the outside world, outside pressures or our own internal pressures and let go of that. Do you think there's any ways to objectively measure flow state? Um, yes and no. So I think that um, what we've seen is the development now of many questionnaires. Um, when I saw your question about how can we measure flow, um, what I've seen is that um, you can go to websites like positivepsychology.org or .com, um, but basically it's Martin Seligman's Positive Psychology website, and they've got 22 scales for rating flow experiences. I think that gives you the psychometric um, definition of flow, but it's not really giving us a brain measurement of flow. Right. To date, I haven't seen any really strong scientific experiments that persuade me that flow is actually being measured. Right. There's a lot of discussion in functional neuroimaging about what the default mode network is doing, mm -hmm. um, You know what's happening in the rest state, what happens when we free our mental states of other kinds of activity. Yeah. Um, it's a work in progress as far as I can tell. And I haven't seen a good study of the flow state per se that's documented and persuaded me what, what are the brain systems involved. I've but you can send it over. Uh, I, I mean, I've seen <laughs> some find. stuff on uh, heart rate variability and a lot of like these peripheral metrics mm -hmm. of uh, the parasympathetic nervous system and an autonomic mm -hmm. nervous system you kind of working perfectly in tandem. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that's an element of flow, right? But it's not everything probably, right? That's right. I think that, you know, those kinds of um, um, measurements do relate to flow in a way that um, um, was identified by a guy named Carl Pribram back in the 60s and 70s when the study of, of peripheral physiology was really hot. Yeah. And so there's a lot of studies of heart rate variability, um, uh, heart rate acceleration, deceleration, pupillary uh, changes, also changes in the sweat gland response, changes in auditory sensitivity, you know, thresholds change. Mm -hmm. And so basically in the course of that work, they studied um, responses to novelty, including orienting and defensive responses mm -hmm. um, and other systems that 
were involved in stabilizing an activation-based system. So anyhow, Pribram usefully distinguished what was called arousal from activation. Mm -hmm. um, and arousal was sort of like a bottom-up, um, uh, flexibility-oriented um, kind of activity. It comes from the reticular activating system, right. and it arouses the brain and shakes things up. Um, there's a forebrain system that is descending and serves to control focused probably in the basal, frontal lobes and basal ganglia that helps to stabilize things. Mm -hmm. And so these two opponent processes also have unique relations to sympathetic and parasympathetic activation. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, when you're in the ideal balanced state between sympathetic, parasympathetic activation, um, between arousal and activation, I think that probably is the flow state. Mm -hmm. um, but again, um, I think it's, it's something that's devilishly difficult to study um, because just getting people to like I said, okay, now uh, just just assume the flow state right, for go me. To flow, go, go, go to flow. Go, go, Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, but maybe you'll do that experiment. Yeah, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll have to. Happy to work with you on that. Oh, let's do it. Yeah.